Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss Norman and welcome to this first video in a series of videos on test automation using JUnit 5. In this first video, as a stepping stone towards automating the execution of JUnit test cases, I'm gonna show you how to use the console launcher, which is a utility provided by the JUnit framework, and it allows you to execute JUnit test cases from the command line. And if you're watching this series, I would expect you to be either a QA engineer, a DevOps engineer, a test automation engineer, uh, or a full stack developer. And by that, I mean, not only do you do like back end and front end, but you're also responsible on your team for um, the CI CD pipeline. And in this series, I'm not gonna focus on showing you how to uh, write JUnit test cases. In this series, I'm gonna focus on automating the execution of JUnit test cases, as well as reporting test execution results to Grafana. So in this first video, we're gonna cover how to execute JUnit test cases from the command line using the console launcher. And in the next video, we'll write a Jenkins pipeline script that uses the console launcher to automatically execute those JUnit test cases on a Jenkins server. And the pipeline that we write will include some reporting capabilities within Jenkins, uh, but in the later videos, we're gonna expand that reporting capability to include Grafana. So we'll report out test results to Grafana. And to follow along in this video, you'll need two dependencies. The first dependency is the Java Developer Kit, and I'm gonna be using uh, the JDK version 11. And the second dependency is the console launcher itself provided by JUnit, uh, and I've included a link to that standalone jar file in the video description below. Now, before we begin, I'd like to point out that there are several options you could use to execute JUnit test cases. Firstly, you can use a build system like Gradle or Maven or Ant. And then your other option is to use an IDE that has built-in support for JUnit. And there's a lot of IDEs that have integration with the JUnit framework, uh, like VS Code has an integration, and so does uh, IntelliJ. And these IDE integrations are nice to use on your local work environment, uh, but if you're trying to automatically execute test cases, then that limits your options and it excludes uh, IDEs. So you can only you can either use a build system like Gradle or Maven, uh, or you can use the console launcher to uh, execute JUnit test cases. And in this series, instead of using Gradle or Maven, uh, we're going to exercise the console launcher to do our test execution in JUnit. Now that you know what we're gonna cover, let's go ahead and walk through the code that we wanna test, as well as the JUnit test cases uh, that we wanna execute using the console launcher. The first class that I wanna walk through is the car class, and it's just a simple uh, model of a car. And the car class has two attributes, it has make and model, which are strings, and then the car constructor takes as input the make and the model, and uh, sets those attributes accordingly. And then ap directly after setting those attributes, it prints out vroom vroom, you know, congratulations on your new, and then prints out the make and model that you provided in the constructor. And in addition to that, we have some functions associated with the vehicle that you would expect, um, like turn right, which just simply pr prints out uh, to the console, turned right, uh, turn left, move forward, reverse, break, and then two getters, uh, get make and get model, which will return the, the values of the car um, member variables. So this is a pretty simple Java class, and this is the class that we want to uh, test, that we want to run test cases on. So the associated test class is this car test, um, car test class, and the car test class has these member variables make and model, which are hard-coded to be our test uh, values. So I'm gonna use uh, Honda and Civic, and then it instantiates a new, uh, uh, a new car object, and we call it test car, and then the following two uh, test methods used, use uh, test car to, um, to perform their tests. And uh, the first test, there's only two tests, and, and we could make a lot more for that uh, car class, but we're just going to limit it to two since we just want to focus on the functionality of the console launcher in this video. And the first test uh, tests the make, and it just confirms that when we retrieve use the get make function, uh, the value that's returned matches the, um, the make member variable value here. So it should say Honda. 
So this is really testing the uh, the git make the return value of the git make um, uh, function as well as I guess the the constructor um, setting the the value from the constructor input to the member variable of the car class. And then the second test method, uh, very similar, just test does the same thing with the get model uh, function. And so it's called test model. And uh, at the top here, we have the app, uh, the app class. And this is a very simple driver program that just uh, instantiates a new car. It's a new Ferrari 488 and then moves the car forward and then brakes. So uh, just a very simple driver program that we'll, we'll use later on. And one thing that I'd like to point out is that all of this code is available on my GitHub. I've included a link uh, to, the, to the GitHub repo in the description below. Uh, so be sure to check that out if, uh, if you want to follow along and maybe copy some of this code if you, if you want to. So now that we've walked through the code, I wanna show you the, um, the console launcher jar file and I've put it in the, the lib directory under my project workspace. Uh, so it's, I'm using uh, the console launcher version 1.7.0. And again, I've included a, a link uh, directly to the, um, the console launcher jar file in the description below. Um, but that is the, the name of the jar file um, when you download it from the uh, from the Maven repo. So you can, you can go directly there or you can use something like wgit to, to retrieve uh, the jar file as well. And uh, I've placed it in my project workspace. So this jar file, the console launcher includes all of the dependencies that you need to run a JUnit test. So it includes the JUnit platform, it includes uh, Jupyter, um, the Jupyter module, it includes the vintage module, so if you have JUnit uh, 4 tests, you can also run it, um, run those tests using the console launcher. So to execute those two test cases in the car test uh, class using the console launcher, uh, what I'm gonna do is open up my terminal and I'm in the, the project uh, workspace and I'm going to navigate to the source, uh, the source directory. And in the source directory, I'm going to go ahead and compile uh, my uh, uh, my classes, the car uh, car class, car tests, and the app uh, app class. So I invoke Java C and then specify the class path. And the class path we're going to include um, the uh, the li uh, the um, JUnit uh, console launcher jar file. So uh, J unit, and I'm gonna wrap that in quotes. And then I'm gonna specify uh, the classes that we wanna compile. Okay, so that compiled them. And uh, now to actually run uh, our tests, we can invoke the console launcher using uh, Java. So I'm going to say Java dash jar and uh, then reference the uh, standalone uh, jar file. And then I'm going to pass in some parameters to the console launcher. I'm going to pass in the class path and the class path that includes the test class is the current directory because I'm in source and the car test class is, is in the uh, current directory. So I'm gonna just specify the current directory uh, in the class path, and then I'm going to use the select class uh, option, and I'm gonna specify the car test, uh, the car test class as a class that uh, the console launcher should, should look uh, for and execute tests in. And I don't need a equals here, so I'm gonna put that. And then finally, I also want to uh, do reporting because uh, it's gonna be a very important part of the series to report out the results of the test cases. Uh, so I want the console launcher to produce uh, and store the reports somewhere. So what I can do here is I can use the uh, reports directory 
uh, option and I'm going to specify it as the reports directory, which um, I have a reports directory in this uh, under the source directory. So I'm going to go ahead and invoke that and it runs the console launcher and you can see here, <clears throat> you can see here that uh, it ran the tests and the constructor for the, uh, the car class was called two times for each of the test methods. So congratulations on your new Honda Civic. And then I specified running test two and running test one. And then in, if you look down here, you'll see the module that was used. So JUnit Jupiter was used as the module. And also you can see that JUnit Vintage is also available from the console launcher as well if I had uh, uh, JUnit 4 test cases. And then it shows me, it provides me the results for each of the test cases. And in this case, uh, it did pass for, uh, for bo both test cases. And if we look at the uh, reports uh, folder, I have a report, even though I didn't have any vintage tests, uh, uh, tests that were, uh, that the vintage module uh, ran, uh, it still gives me a vintage report as well as a Jupyter report. And the Jupyter report has the results that I'm that I'm looking for. So I can cat that and it's just an XML <clears throat> file containing uh, the whoops. Test dash J unit. Oh, whoops. All right. <clears throat> and it contains the uh, the details of the test execution. Okay. So a lot of applications will use this, including, uh, Jenkins. So Jenkins will also, uh, use the test report to produce, um, reporting within Jenkins, but we're also going to use this report later on, uh, for, for reporting out in Grafana. And just to see what the output is like when the test case fails, let's go ahead and do that. We'll, we'll make this, uh, <clears throat> We'll make these test cases fail. Uh, so I'm gonna put here, I'm gonna misspell. Let's put Honda. Okay. And let's go ahead and recompile and rerun. And it gives me the stack trace for the failing assertion. And then it also gives me the the test uh, output here. So the test make failed and then it printed out my optional uh, failure message here. And then it showed me the this is like the JUnit platform telling me, you know, expected Honda, but uh, received the misspelled Honda. Okay, so that was a brief introduction to the console launcher uh, for JUnit 5. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider throwing a like on it and subscribing to the channel for more videos. And I hope you stick around for the future videos of the series. In the next video, we're gonna actually write a Jenkins pipeline script that invokes the console launcher to execute these uh, JUnit test cases on a Jenkins server. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below in the comments. And thanks for watching.